preach. Come on, somebody. He taught me to seek him. Before I ever knew I was going to preach, he taught me to seek him. And the reason I know I was called to preach without anybody telling me and ain't needed nobody to tell me since is because I was spending time with him when I heard it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I've met people say, well, I don't know if I am or not. You might not be. Hallelujah. But if you'll get along with him, I promise you, you'll come out of his presence and you'll know one way or another. And you won't need a prophet to thus saith the Lord over you every time you need something from God. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody shot Jesus has a need. I'll prove it by the cross. He hung on the cross and said I thirst. In John 19, he weren't thirsty just for something in this life. He was thirsty for me. He was thirsty for you. What Adam had lost in a garden under a tree. Come on, Jesus. Now was trying to get back and did get back to those that'll believe on a tree in that garden. Come on, he would walk with with God, Adam would in the cool of the day, Genesis chapter three, but sin entered in as they disobeyed the one commandment that God gave them and now they were separated from God but God had a plan and he sent his son Jesus and ye who are sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2, 13, 1 John 1, the Bible said, verses seven, and you have fellowship one with another because the blood of his son Jesus cleanses us from our sin. Somebody shout, wherever the blood of Jesus is applied in faith, fellowship is born. God has called us to the fellowship of his son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 1, 9. Somebody shout, that's the above all call. You are called to fellowship with Jesus. I've, I've, I've preached it. I've preached to preachers a bunch in my ministry at times where that's all that would be. God somehow, somehow lines me up to do that sometimes. Even when I was in Africa in 2011, I preached two days. He'd been out in the sticks in the bush. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah to a bunch of preachers. And I can always see it on their face. And some of you will understand why when I teach in just a moment. Because I will make statements like this. God ain't called you to preach. That's what he sent you to do. What you see me doing up here tonight publicly, this is not what I'm called to do. This is what I'm sent to do. Don't mistake me. This is what I'm anointed to do. I feel like when I'm standing before a pulpit and a people, and even the more people they are, the more comfortable I get. I feel like I'm in my living room in my recliner watching gun smoke or something. Come on, somebody. Just that relaxed. So don't mistake me, this is what I'm anointed to do, but it's what I'm sent to do. Because in Mark 3, 13, Mark 3, 13 through 15, Jesus called unto him who he would. Somebody shout, he called them to himself. Secondly, he ordained them to be with him. Thirdly, he sent them forth to heal the sick and to cast out devils and to preach the word of God. First, he called them to be with him. Second, he separated. He ordained them to be with him. In other words, he called them to come to him. He ordained them, separated them from the world and sin so they could hang with him, stay with him. Come on, somebody. That was the place they were at with him, with him. And then, after being with him, getting so soaked and saturated with him, from there, he sent them out. And they went out with power and cast the devil out and healed the sick. And and preach with power. Somebody say they were called to him and sent by him to preach with power and cast the devil out and heal the sick. So that's why I say whatever you do publicly in ministry is not the call. That's what you're anointed to do. That's what you're sent to do. But what you're sent to do comes with power out of intimacy, out of a relationship, out of the called place, which is fellowship with God. Come on, somebody. Daily seeking him.